Welcome back to the Eric Crown Crypto Channel. Wishing you a happy and healthy start to this nice Thursday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. We have plenty of things to talk about today on the higher term timeframes and even on the short term timeframes as well as we follow up on the last uh, few days of price action analysis and a major closure today, not just for the daily, but also the monthly and of course quarterly as well. So if you're not if you're not aware of why this is such a big deal, the quarterly is a really, 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 really big deal to big money managers because after a quarter ends and you get a new quarter, is typically when a lot of you know reallocation decisions get made so we do expect you know big monumental shifts in price action coming into you know well this next month so with that in mind i also want to talk about um one of the big signals that we are looking for one of them has been confirmed the other one is something that could be confirmed as soon as tonight which does have major implications for price action so without further ado we're going to swing back into the crown train application a little bit later it has a phenomenally important portion to be playing with in this analysis as a bit of a warning signal but with that said let's start it off right in over here actually with dixie today the dollar index so as always when it comes to dixie i do want to always reiterate the stance that hey a lot of people have some very vast misinterpretations with what Dixie represents, the dollar index that is, and they essentially make a direct corollary, a direct corollary between the uh, an asset price, just like a random commodity or asset price, and then Dixie's value, thinking that like that's the ultimate dollar's value. It's, it's not. Dixie is the dollar's value relative to a basket of, fiat, uh, of other fiat currencies, um, mostly weighted against the euro. And, uh, and, and, and and a few others as well, but mostly the euro actually, uh, the vast majority of it at least. Anyways, with that in mind, it has had some pretty good results in the past as getting the general macro trend right, meaning your sort of intuitive understanding of this would be, you know, a uh, Dixie essentially within a downtrend, you kind of expect equities to be going in an uptrend. It's not always gonna operate like that, especially on the short-term timeframes, but we're talking about weekly and above trends. Yes, that, that has been a, somewhat consistent relationship, consistent enough to be speaking about right here. The reason why I'm calling this one out is because we did hit our target to the upside coming into this month, and we're also hitting our pullback target coming into this month as well. So that was based off of the breakout that we did see in, uh, I think it was like the later, yeah, August, uh, sorry, not August, but, uh, but September of last year coming into Q4 or so. So we hit that target over here. We also said a pullback from this area was very, very likely. That's what we're getting right now. And I do believe that earlier in the past couple of weeks, we did say a move back down to about 97 and a half, quite likely as well. And that's kind of what we're getting right here. I'm not saying this to my own horn, but so that the people who have been tuning into this content can kind of follow up as we go onwards and around. Anyways, with, within the context of this current price action, yes, I do think that uh, we very likely do see a little bit lower on this one. I would actually extend my downside target, not just to 97 and a half, but very likely 96 and a half in the next month to month and a half to come. So does that provide another sort of uh, venue of analysis to kind of uh, look at, you know, some of our, some of our favorite assets, right? On this channel, you know, uh, Bitcoin being one of them. Um, you know, probably yes, you know, adds a little bit more onto that probabilistic nature of upside continuation. Again, this is the weekly, this is the monthly, and I think that this is a pretty, <laughs> a pretty damn obvious rejection right there. Of course, it's going to be bounced along the way, but when we're talking about general long term trend, uh, you know, I do suspect that we see another month or so of testing a bit of downside. Problem is, long term, this is not necessarily bearish. <laughs> this is actually quite bullish long term. So, uh, how do we fit that into the analysis? We're just going to ignore it for right now, right? <laughs> no, we'll come back to it when uh when it does look like trend resumation but uh, but for now i do suspect that this pullback does continue onwards and forwards anyways let's get on into the most recent signal that we've been really uh hammering on on this channel for bitcoin specifically here i'm gonna need to take off all my drawing tools and i want to reference this cross right here a very simple cross one of the crosses that uh, you know i kind of base a lot of the things that i look on um uh, in my own analysis, which is just the yellow 21 and the green 55, that's the silver cross right there. We did officially get the 21 cross on the upside of the 55 in this case as of uh, yesterday's closure. And now we do have something to be looking at uh, long term here. So this is specific to CME. Obviously, we already saw this on spot price action. I believe we did a bit of an analysis over here. And of course, because spot price action, the signals there are you know usually not as uh, high degree of hit rate as what you see on CME. Um, you know, I do want to go over the signal on CME because it does hold more weight anyways. I can just briefly show you the ones over here on spot price action with these red circles on the crosses. 
it's pretty damn good, but it's not, it, you know, it's obviously it's not perfect. Nothing is perfect, but it does give you a generalized view of what's likely to go on. Anyways, in this case, I think that uh, CME here is even more obvious. And we can go over the historical results of this. Keep in mind that uh, CME hasn't been around as long as a lot of the spot price action charts. But in this case, um, all of these crosses that we have seen, except for the Rona virus dump uh, one, have, you know, gone on for uh, months, um, typically uh, months or at least a month. In fact, if we were to get rid of what I kind of consider this as an outlier for the Rona dump over here a couple years ago in March, we do see that um, you know, the lowest cross or sorry, the, the cross that had the lowest amount of time between cross happening and next major high was actually back on over here in January of 2020, which was still a little bit over a month. Other than that, um, even that would be kind of a an outlier compared to everything else. Uh, if we were to take the next lowest one, it'd be actually 62 days. So almost or basically two months in that case, um, uh, except for those two, um, all of them have taken a very, very long time, as you can see, uh, you know, multiple months on end, in some cases, even like a year plus and have produced some pretty massive of gains to the upside and pretty massive losses to the downside and uh, typically do you know like i said take their time so in this case right here um we do have that cross the upside obviously in play and you know if we we're going to go off the history of that that likely does imply that the upside probabilities you know get increased a little bit more here as we do suspect uh, or at least i do see targets still higher now this likely takes time to play out as we have kind of postulated on the momentum versus volatility chart uh, many times in the past like couple months here but ultimately um, if we were to kind of just look at it from this angle right here, we do see an ascending triangle breakout. The reason why this is important is because it has a technical target that is uh, showing all the way up here to $56,000, also in confluence with our, la or not our last major breakdown, but one of our major breakdowns from early December right here after that little stutter step in consolidation for a bit of time. And then also the 618 Fibonacci retracement right here on a bearish retracement from the high to the low of this last sort of uh, segment that we've seen to the downside. So I do like the confluence right there. and. You know that is still a reasonable target as long as this one condition is not met and i, and I really want to spend a lot of time on this next part um because well if this happens i would flip around to being quite bearish very very fast <laughs> and and i think that uh and i think that there is good reason to be aware of this namely because one uh, this market you know a lot of people think or it seems to me and tell me if you agree with this in the comment section below but from what i understand or what i've seen on crypto twitter crypto youtube whatever the fuck it might be is that there seems to be a like a lot of um uh, surety, uh, like what, what's the word sure, like people are sure, but like they're sure in a hubristic way um, that basically Bitcoin's going on, you know, upwards and onwards from here, which I, again, I do think is a lot more likely, but there's a good reason to be very defensive against any sort of potential major failure, in this case, a bull trap potentially. And that is due to the global open interest representing leverage positions. Also that in alignment with the leverage ratio, by the way, the leverage ratio is basically at all time highs. Yes, it did take a bit of a downtick uh, recently, but Still, I mean, for all that it's worth, it's still at phenomenally massive highs. And if we do go over here into the global open interest, we can see that as of right now, there are about 14, let's go to an hourly, yeah, about 14 spot two, four billion uh, uh, positions on the board. Um, and that, to put things into perspective, is higher than what we saw on the summer bear trap. It's even, uh, or it's about as high as what we did see on the April highs of last year at about $65,000. And it is about very, very close to what we saw in late November, early December when Bitcoin was trading um, in the deep $50,000 territories. For reference right now, we're at those same, lever or sorry, we're at those same open interest position, or sorry, same open interest levels, but Bitcoin is, you know, more than $10,000 below even the lowest of those comparable regions. So. I do think that that is uh, of of warranting simply because if we do see an unwind from that, which we very likely will at some point, uh, it's actually probably inevitable, dare I say, um, just depends how high Bitcoin gets first before that unwind. That's likely going to lead to, on average, from you know looking at uh, at this historically, 20% drop or more. Um, so the question is, at least in my mind, how high does Bitcoin get before pulling out a pullback like that? Well. 
In this case, obviously we do have this target a lot higher at the $56,000 OSAR level. Obviously that is also in alignment and, and uh, confluent with several other things. One of them, with well, the big one for me is obviously the, uh, the this, this chart over here. I won't go through the full explanation of it, but basically suggest $56,000 is another major relevant target to the upside. But I would outline um, two other areas as well that I would express caution with. One of them being the 0.5 retracement here, just below $52,000, also where Bitcoin struggled in the early December sort of segment over here and keep in mind during that time uh we actually saw even less open interest than what we're seeing right now which is rather interesting and uh and also kind of where we're at right now in fact um at about 40 47 5 to forty eight thousand bucks i think that's a little bit less likely i do think that bitcoin is more likely to continue from here and the real question is do we see that major pullback from 52 ish to you know 51 to 52 or do we see it after 56 um you know, if it happens somewhere right around here, I'd expect the pullback to, you know, at minimum bring Bitcoin back down to the $45,000 region, uh, perhaps even all the way down to, you know, 43 to 44. And, uh, and if it happens at about $56,000, I'd probably be looking for Bitcoin to come back down somewhere just below 50 um, if that were to occur. So we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves right now, but uh, but I do think that that is, you know, worth being aware of. Here's where I would be very uh, concerned, let's say. Yeah, very concerned is a good word right now. Uh, basically implying that you're going to see the bull trap come from right here or, or a bull trap come from right here. I would not say that that is likely until or if and only if Bitcoin closes a daily or especially even a higher term time frame than that below forty four and a half thousand dollars. If that happens very likely Bitcoin's coming back down probably below $40,000. And at that point, you know, you're probably going to see a lot of, uh, a lot of a lot of lamentation and, and maybe even low over time as well but i don't want to get too out of myself uh for right now um anyways it, uh, again to reiterate my stance yeah i do think that bitcoin very likely does try again higher and then the question is do we get a major pullback from like 51 52 or, or 56 57 or so anyways the next big signal that i'm really waiting on for today which guess where it has a target towards it's actually got a couple of targets here and let me just force this baby back on okay force probably not a good word but there we go um is the monthly so the monthly is closing today as is the quarterly the monthly however does have a technical signal baking up um, as of right now and any sort of a monthly closure here or higher and especially if it's above the january high which was uh just under forty eight thousand dollars then this does have a high degree of hit rate with one technical target all the way up towards about fifty-six to fifty-seven thousand dollars, so a good confluence there yet again, and a secondary one at about sixty-one or sixty-two thousand dollars, which has a, a lower probability of being hit, but you know, still, still pretty damn decent. I also want to call out this as well. We're gonna have a chance to see the monthly BBWP representing volatility over here turn up for the first time since really July of last year is when we got that last uptick. And if that does happen, well, any time that we have seen monthly volatility very, very low, re relatively speaking, and then get that upwards tick plus being above the moving average. So here, here, and, and, and here, well, that has correlated onto the chart with these major lows in Bitcoin's history. Um, now, of course, it would be silly to think that low volatility would always equate towards upwards moves that theoretically should not like it's that's just not like the right interpretation but it has for bitcoin and once again we're kind of seeing the same thing over here so you know for right now again just another thing that does kind of suggest likely higher um other than that what else do i want to get into okay so we spoke about that we spoke about that Oh yeah, there's one other major signal that is also going to be uh, confirmed as soon as tonight, uh, or it either will or will not, and that is on the fundamental chart over here. I want to once again bring this up because we do see the accumulation distribution indicator getting its first positive slope coming into the month of March. We want to see that continue specifically into this next month of, uh, of April. Um, and again, I won't do the full explanation on this. If you're more interested in long-term analysis, check out the long-term analysis playlist. I uploaded one on Sunday and it is still very much relevant. Uh, but in this case right here, you know, there's a few pushbacks with this, obviously, being that this is in kind of the lower end of it. But ultimately, if we do continue on with the upward slope, I'd kind of be equating this more similar to what we saw back on over here. That's kind of the only iteration where we have something relatively similar, um, where the accumulation distribution indicator is getting its first positive slope coming out of this sort of uh, short term correction in the long term scheme of things. You'll even notice that the uh, MFI over here is in a very similar posturing to what, we, what we're seeing right now as well. Just want to see that one continue onwards and forwards. So we'll, we'll check back in on that one tomorrow and then um i don't know we haven't really even referenced the low term time frames here but 
you know, what am I looking at as a low term time frame range? Uh, very short term time frames. Let's go over here to an hourly. This one's actually getting things really, really well. Um, for basically forty six thousand dollars to the downside. I, I think anything above there is completely fine. You know, Bitcoin might come back down and test around there. But if we do start to see hourly closures below that region, I would say that that's the first major warning flag you're going to be shown uh, in a potential major bull trap situation. I would be looking for you know targets down another thousand uh, to fifteen hundred somewhere to this blue box territory right here. And guess where that would bring Bitcoin somewhere around forty four. Or five. Obviously, that has implications with a much more long, uh, long-term um, confirmation of a major bull trap. Until that happens, though, I'm basically looking for this to fill this area out a little bit more and probably give one more try to the upside. Um, short term, I would be looking at basically 47, uh, 47, eight to but let's just call it 48,000 bucks on even an hourly closure to be get another continuation drive, probably somewhere around 49, maybe even 50 thousand dollars, and probably sets it up for more continuation long term. Um, or yeah, I mean, that's basically it. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. Uh, you know, basically looking for something to resume that move all the way up into this region right here. Um, again, in alignment with those uh, with those next set of targets. So I think that's a good place to leave off on this video. Um, I hope that this was in some way helpful. Uh, I want to once again remind you that we have the new trading journal uh, live on the Crown Trade application, which you can get for free if you just go and check the link in the description below. I do you believe that you need an account on this, but that is free to make. And uh, yeah, then you can start to track your results, which we are really, really happy about. And we're going to be adding some more functionality to it in the not so distant future. Cool. Okay. That's it for today. I want to be wishing you well. Take care and see you soon.